I made a game in one week and this is how I did it. I don't think I'm gonna finish this. Recently, I found out that a game development YouTube channel called Brackies was hosting a game jam, and a game jam is basically where a bunch of game developers get together online and compete to make the best game in one week around a certain theme. And for this game jam in particular, the theme was what's behind the door, so with that information in mind, I hit the sack ready for day one. I started out the day just brainstorming ideas for the jam, and eventually I came up with something that was kind of like a horror game but also partly a puzzle game, but then I remembered that there's already a really popular horror game based on doors out there, so I scrapped that idea entirely and just tried something completely different. I thought it would be cool to make something kind of like the game Portal, because portals are technically just doors, except they're way cooler. So with the basic idea in mind, I created a new 3D Unity project and decided to name it Door Dude, and I started by setting up the player movement. I wanted it to be kind of like a first person shooter, so instead of coding an entirely new movement system, I just took the one from my other game called Physics and used that instead. And normally in a game jam this would have gotten me disqualified, but luckily I'm allowed to use old assets and things that other people have made for this specific jam, so I was good to go. I ended up spending pretty much the whole day just messing with the movement system and trying to optimize it for the kind of gameplay I was looking for, and you might notice that I'm using an old video thumbnail as one of the floor textures, and uh, that's because it's really easy to tell how fast the player is moving if there's a detailed image on the ground like that one, so that's pretty much all I ended up doing on the first day, and if I want to be able to make it to the end of this game jam and still be fully mentally stable, I need to get some sleep. So I called it a day and I hit the sack. So, uh, it's day two, and today I wanted to try to make the portals just so that I have like a good basic idea of how they work. And I actually found a tutorial by uh, Brackies himself, uh, the guy who's hosting the game jam, and he actually goes full in depth on how to make a portal. So, hopefully, this will help. I'm gonna try it out. I started by setting up two environments for the portals to go in, and then I actually had to make the actual portals, and that's a little bit complicated, so I'll try to give you the basic idea. Basically, you have two cameras, and one of those is the player's camera, and the other one is another camera that's by the other portal that moves and rotates at the same time as the player's camera. Then you use what's called a render texture to project whatever the other camera is seeing onto the portal that you're looking through. Basically, what this does is that when you look through one portal, you're seeing whatever is on the other side of the other portal. And then if the player gets close enough to the first portal, they just teleport to the second one. The only problem with this is that the only way to get what the other camera is seeing and turn it into a texture is to use a shader. And if you have no idea what a shader is, uh, welcome to the club, neither do I. But luckily, Brackies posted the code for this one in the description of his video, so I considered stealing it, but honestly, that's just lazy. And it's also degenerate behavior. I'm not gonna put up with degenerate behavior. And my portals work now, but they work fine, mostly, but the moment that you rotate them at different angles, they, they don't cooperate. I ended up spending probably way more time than I should have trying to solve this problem, so at the end of the day I just decided to tie it into the puzzle aspect of the game and call it a feature like I usually do with the many problems that I have no clue how to fix. So now that I had working portals, uh, I needed a good way for the player to spawn them, and there's only two real good ways to do this. One of them is to do it like the game Portal, where you can just shoot a portal wherever you want to, but that isn't going to work because the portals would have to be rotated at different angles, and um, I, I kind of can't do that. And the second way is for them to place it just like a crafting bench from a survival game. And I'm a pro coder, so this should be a piece of cake for me. Oh my gosh, no. Oh. There. First try. So there you go, portals mostly work, but at this point it was getting pretty late in the day, so I decided that it was about time to hit the hay. So, uh, it's day four, and I skipped day three because I was just super busy with schoolwork yesterday, and I gotta go to school. Which is kind of gonna be a problem because that's gonna be like a 10 hour chunk out of each day, and I only have like three days remaining. So I guess you could say, um, I'm in a bit of a jam. <laughs> anyway, I'm off to school, so I'll check in when I get back. Approximately 10 hours later. 
The first thing I did was add a little dot in the middle of the screen so that the player could see where they were going to place a portal, and then I tried making this portal system actually work, and that's when I realized that this whole thing is buggier than my grandma's basement, and trust me, my grandma's basement is pretty buggy. I tried getting ChatGPT to help out, but ChatGPT can barely make a cube jump, so um... I, I was kind of screwed. Eventually I got it so that you can place the red portal right after the blue one, but I need them to be rotated the same and actually function as portals, and this is where I got stuck for way longer than I'm willing to admit. At this point, I only got three days left in the jam, and I've barely accomplished anything. And to make matters worse, I was completely exhausted. I had pretty much just spent the past four days doing absolutely nothing but working between school and home, and I hadn't really paid any attention to my overall health. Uh, which is bad. Don't do that, kids. Get in some good sleep and, uh, you know, eat your vitamins. Basically, at this point, my brain was just about as fried as it had ever been, and I was just completely insane. So, it's pretty late, uh, and I don't know why I've never really thought about this, but there's just been this Little Debbie poster hanging on my wall right above my PC for like six months. And I never really questioned it. That's so weird. Yeah, that was pretty much the deepest thought in my head at the time. Honestly, by this point, finishing the jam seemed like a lost cause. I don't think I'm gonna finish this. I had barely made any progress with my portals in four days, and honestly, I didn't have a whole lot of time left to do anything else interesting with it. But you know what? Giving up is cringe. Little Debbie didn't give up. She's a girl. So I snapped myself out of it, and I just kept going. I literally coded for another four hours straight, just sitting there at my desk doing nothing but experimenting with this portal placement system, and at the end of the day, I did it. I finished my portal placement system, and I actually finally accomplished a complete task. So with a booming headache and a dying will to live, I hit the sack for day five. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I'm sorry to put this into a two-parter, but part two is going to come in probably the next few weeks. And also, if you want to see what I'm doing behind the scenes, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Justin's Cool Games and Justin's Games, respectively. And I also thought it would be pretty cool to chat with you guys in real time. So I'm launching a new Discord server, and the link is going to be in the description of this video. So if you want to come in and chat a little bit, then that would be pretty cool. But anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. One. Cheers.